Now, there was a time not too long ago where there was a clear directive from leadership at Fox News where they said, look, we're all in now on DeSantis. We don't want Trump. We're going to go all in on DeSantis. And, and I'm sure they wanted their uh, host to follow suit. They wanted them to toe the line, if you will. But if you'll notice, they never really fully broke up with Trump. And you always had a diversity of opinion on Fox News where hosts were different degrees of pro-Trump or mildly anti-Trump, ranging from mildly anti-Trump to colossally pro-Trump. Well, now, um, look, the polls are showing what looks like the inevitable, bar any uh, outside circumstances like being behind bars. It looks like Trump will cruise to certainly the Republican nomination. And so now you see a total about face, a total reversal, where any of the flirting with the likes of DeSantis is gone. You still have some who are trying to like prop up Nikki Haley, but they're trying to make their peace with Trump. And by the way, Trump has now leaned into attacking Fox News on a regular basis because he wants total loyalty. He wants nothing but sycophants. He wants Fox News to be like Newsmax and One American News Network and almost be like comical North Korea level propaganda talking about the dear leader. Well, they decided we're going to uh, go right back to Fox News original and do a Trump ball coddling fest. Let's watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so funny because you think that will tear the nation apart. Meanwhile, politics is tearing the nation apart. Um, and in many ways, the Republican Party um, has a lot of deep divisions, uh, particularly among the donor class and the rest of the, the, the Republican Party. That's true. The Koch brothers decided, well, now it's a Koch brother. I think one of them died. Uh, they decided, we're going to back Nikki Haley. We're going to go all in on Haley. By the way, good luck with that. <laughs> like, it reminds me of 2016. We're going to go with Bush, Jeb, Jeb Bush. We're going to go with Marco Rubio. We're going to go with uh, John Kasich. We're going to go with Ted Cruz. It's like, that didn't work. You guys didn't have one clear opponent to Trump and prop that one person up. You already were with the Santas for a while. Now you're flipping Nikki Haley. Too little, too late, too little, too late. But anyway, she's right about that. The donor class wants Haley. Uh, the Republican base obviously wants Trump. Well, the Democrats do, too. They just they sure get do. squelched down with Team Joe and so Team true. Obama. We'll see how that plays out. So yesterday, uh, Donald Trump was in Iowa. So was Ron DeSantis. And here's a clip of Donald Trump talking about Joe Biden being really the destroyer of democracy. Listen. Uh. Since crooked Joe Biden got in, he has been weaponizing government against his political opponents like a Third world communist tyrant, really no different. But crooked Joe Biden's banana republic ends on November 5th, 2024. It's a banana republic. Biden and his radical left allies like to pose as defenders of democracy. But Joe Biden is not the defender of American democracy. Joe Biden is the destroyer of American democracy. So first of all, let's be clear. What he's really saying is, wah, there's 91 criminal charges against me. Wah, stop the charges now. Stop, stop. That's what he's actually saying. That's what he's really concerned about. But, of course, this isn't just Joe Biden. It's, it's uh, the independent uh, investigator and prosecutor Jack Smith who's doing this. It's, it's Fannie Willis in, uh, in Georgia that's doing it. It's it, like this is people trying to uphold the law because you broke it. That's what it is. Okay, so let's be clear about what he means and how wrong he is. But let's also be clear. He talks about how Joe Biden, Joe Biden is destroying democracy, right? And normally my commentary would be to come out here and be like, that's absurd. But we just got news that the Florida Democrats canceled the Democratic primary. They said, no Dean Phillips, no Marion Williamson, no Cenk Uger. Sorry, we're going to retroactively move the date for registration back. And you guys missed the deadline. So now none of you can be on the ballot. That is authoritarian. That is anti-democracy. But let's see what Fox says. <laughs> It's him and his people. They're the wreckers of the American dream. The American dream is dead with them in office. It's uh, sad. Over the past few years, you've watched Biden and his band of Marxist, communist, fascists try to crush free speech, censor their critics, criminalize dissent. Again, censor their critics. Tell me again what Elon Musk did the other day. Oh, that's right. He said, I'm going to ban the words decolonize on Twitter as well as from the river to the sea. Anything to say on that, Trump? Are you against that? No, you're actually for that, thank you very much. And by the way, this guy tried to ban flag burning and punish it with a year in jail. He's not pro-free speech, it's ridiculous. Well, I love that he brought that up about the attorney-client privilege. Um, the uh, Democrats, these lawyers, um, these prosecutors are going after Donald Trump's attorneys as well as him, so that's an interesting point he brings up. Okay, the attorney-client privilege thing. What happened was Trump's own lawyers are flipping on him. They're flipping on him. That's got nothing to do with Joe Biden. 
That's got to do with the lawyer saying, I want to keep my ass out of prison because I was a collaborator with the fraudulent elector scheme, the fake elector scheme. So I'm going to, I'm going to start chirping. I'm going to start talking. I'm going to, I'm going to mention how this guy was the head of the snake. He was calling the shots for real, which is not surprising. He's the former president. Of course he was calling the shots. I love that he is just naming it out, calling them communists and fascists. Let's just have a really blunt, honest conversation about what are the choices in this election. I, I hate, I hate so much. Okay. People who follow politics, but not all that closely, and have never really educated themselves on definitions or labels, this is something they do. When they just, every term that sounds extreme and sounds bad, you just take all of them and say, my opponents are all of these things. They are uh, they're fascists, communists, socialists, Maoists, Marxists, any sort of ists <laughs> that sound horrible. Like, they're all of those things. Then when if you were to try to narrow it down and ask them a definition of any one of those things, they couldn't give you a definition for any one, and they don't care about any contradictions of some of these are extreme right-wing ideologies and some of these are extreme left-wing ideologies. Some of these things, are literally, it's impossible to be both of them. No, they don't care. They're just, all the negative words, negative words. And look, I hate to say it, but this is one of those things that, while it's stupid to people who know the terms and the definitions, I think it's a, it's a trick that works with many people in the country. We're just like, oh, that sounds extreme. You're saying they're extreme. You're emoting about it. You're using all these labels. I'm gonna assume you know what it means. I don't know what it means, but it sounds bad, right? And I think that's that's what happens here. And of course the Fox News hosts go right along with it. I don't know if it's a matter of human nature, but I definitely know it's a matter of political strategy that the left has engaged successfully for a good half a decade now of accusing their opponents of the sins which they are committing. Yes. They have done it very successfully, whether or not it's on race, whether or not it's on science, it does not matter. What they have done is demonize others for the things that they are secretly doing. Oh my God, I can't. Like, th this is, the right does this all the time. The left is anti-science because they believe trans people exist. We're pro-science, bro. Really? What are your thoughts on climate change? What are your thoughts on evolution and creationism or intelligent design? Please, what are your thoughts on vaccines? Please tell me, enlighten me what your thoughts are. Yes, okay, look, I will grant you, psychological projection happens on all sides of the political spectrum. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But in terms of who does more of it? Please, please. My favorite is that Trump is always a law and order. I'm the law and order candidate. Homie, you're up on 91 criminal charges, and you were just found liable of fraud. You're going to lose your business license in New York. You might pay a fine up to $250 million. What are you talking about? That's the biggest case of projection I've ever seen in my life. Revealed to itself as well through this lens of you're a threat to democracy. Trump does a very good job there of laying out the ways in which Democrats have threatened democracy by going after their political opponents, and not just their political opponents. Or you actually committed crimes, and so they're trying to uphold the law. And by the way, it's not just Democrats, it's prosecutors, and there's different ideologies among the prosecutors, I'm sure. This is so bogus. This is as bogus as it gets. What he wants is to be able to commit crimes and then get away with it. If he commits crimes and you try to stop him from doing the crimes or have there be consequences, he acts like, you're a threat to democracy. The people who support their political opponents. The assault on free speech has been one of the biggest in my lifetime. Thoughts on all the anti-BDS laws, sir, in all the conservative states. Well, I think it's 27 states where there's anti-BDS laws. If you say, I want to I wanna, uh, boycott Israel, they, they can take away government subsidies from you. Thoughts on that? That's actually anti-free speech in terms of against the First Amendment. And we know because there's a court that upheld it. Our friend Abby Martin went to court over one of these things and won. And then it, I think it's going up to a higher level. It'll be appealed. Who knows what the final conclusion is going to be. But these are clearly, clearly <coughs> anti-First Amendment moves. So tell me again about, uh, you know, your commitment to free speech and how the left is against it. Okay. So... The threat to democracy thing. Look, I saved the final, the most important point for last year. They're agreeing with Trump and coddling his ball sack. But, oh, yes, Biden, big threat to democracy, big threat to... Now, by the way, I explained to you, I do actually think he's a threat to democracy. If you guys cancel the Florida Democratic primary, that's anti-democracy. That's authoritarian. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They're trying to keep all of his challengers off the ballot by any means necessary. They're uh, directly getting involved in the individual states and trying to apply pressure to force them. Hey, don't allow Marion Williamson to come here and give a speech at this college. Don't give her the, the voter data. They tried to change the, um, the first state 
right, to make it South Carolina, because Biden has a big advantage in South Carolina. He won by a lot there last time. They want that to go first, that, you know, they end this thing early. So I see, oh, you got to step aside. You won by so much in South Carolina. There's no legitimate challenger to him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All that's true. So in a sense, Biden is a threat to democracy, without a doubt. And he's also a threat in the sense that he's down more to Trump than anybody else. So you're effectively almost handing it over to the Republicans who are a bigger threat to, to democracy. But that's the main point. The main point is they're agreeing with him that Biden's a threat to democracy. This is the guy who just tried to overturn the last election. They did the fake elector scheme. They did the fraudulent elector scheme. They're in court over it right now. The facts of that case are damning. The internal communications are damning. They were very clear. Yes, this is illegal. We know what we're doing is illegal. We're going to move forward with it anyway. They were this close to declaring martial law, to seizing the voting machines. Like, he tried to get Mike Pence to overthrow the results and declare that Trump gets to stay in there. There has never been a bigger threat to democracy. This guy is against the peaceful transition of power. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But he goes out there and attacks the Democrats as being a threat to democracy, and Fox News coddles his ball sack and moves right along with it. By the way, again, you want to talk about a threat to democracy? Why is it not a threat to democracy for the leading candidate in a primary to decide, I'm not going to debate? One of the few checks we have left in our decrepit, corrupt system is that at least we had a tradition of every time there's a primary, there are debates, and every time there's a general, there are debates, and you get to see the candidate, you get to hear the candidate, they get to explain their positions, they have to, you know, present themselves to the American people in a way that's acceptable to the American people. And Biden's skipping the debates, Trump's skipping the debates. There's a question now, there might not even be general election debates. Why is that not also a threat to democracy? I just, I can't. Like, everything that's happened recently leads me to believe that none of these networks, especially Fox News, they'll never call a spade a spade, right? I mean, just don't even look at their coverage on Israel. It is absolutely horrific. It is horrendous. It is cheerleading, genocide, and ethnic cleansing. But here you have a guy who tried to overthrow democracy, and they're saying, oh, yeah, he's the protector of democracy. Thank you for your contribution, Fox. Real good stuff. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.